Hi, I'm Kelsey Flint. I'm one of the fellows at the University of Colorado with the Fits on the Go blog. Matt, do you mind introducing yourself for the Fits who might be watching this blog? Uh, my pleasure. It's great to uh, say hi to everyone. I'm a heart failure and transplant doctor at Columbia University and uh, outgoing chair of the uh, geriatric cardiology member section. Kind of wear the hat as a geriatric cardiologist. All right. Can you start by telling us why the term geriatric cardiology is not redundant? Um, yeah, good, good point. Um, probably is redundant. It's like a short call from mom or jumbo shrimp. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's clearly redundant because the majority of people we take care of are older adults um, with cardiovascular disease. And I think, um, you know, the, the real issue here is that we um, all kind of believe that we know how to do this, but there are certain special skill sets. We accept in medicine that, you know, we all can't be pediatricians. And I think it's certainly important for um, us to realize that there are certain unique needs of older adults. I like to always describe the idea that we need to, in many ways, kind of embrace complexity. Things are not so simple and straightforward. And um, part of the mission of the geriatric cardiology section is to um, educate um, our broader constituency in cardiology, but certainly FITs and early career professionals. Um, the other, I think, very unique aspect um, of the field is that um, there are a lot of things in cardiology that are kind of stagnant and not growing. The population um, clearly is going to age. Um, interestingly, the fastest growing segment in the worldwide population is those over 85, um, the oldest old. And so I think there are a lot of um, clinical opportunities for um, people to, if they engender into this field, land uh, academic jobs, build clinical programs in geriatric cardiology and research programs that can really advance the field. Wonderful. Can you tell us about some of the specific opportunities there are for fellows in training in the geriatric cardiology section? Yeah, so um, uh, the section itself is um, pretty robust. We have about 700 members. Um, obviously, uh, FITs and ECPs can join any section free of charge and we encourage them to do so. Um, we have in our section uh, um, eight what we call working groups um, focused on such topics as uh, education. Um, we're actually revamping our ECOA, which is the Essentials of Cardiac Care for Older Adults, or online module. It's available to all ACC members free of charge at acc.org backslash ECOA. And we've heavily relied on ECPs and fellows to kind of do that kind of work. Um, we have a, a very active uh, palliative care working group uh, chaired by uh, Jim Kirkpatrick and Paul Hauptman. Um, Paul's the editor of JCF. And there's a growing interest in the needs of um, older adults and their palliative care needs uh, with cardiovascular disease. Um, we also uh, additionally obviously have a research working group. Um, I would note that that group this year had a grant um, uh, running a unique trial called uh, Get Going, which was a fellow-led uh, clinical trial, first of its kind, in which we um, sought to determine whether or not um, encouraging older adults post-hospitalization for cardiovascular disease would be associated with uh, improvements in physical function if they were given a risk-worn octigrapher and kind of encouraged to move as opposed to um, what we usually do, standard of care. And that's being conducted by uh, upwards of 15 fellows around the country. Um, and essentially, we also have a fellows working group slash early career professional working group that interdigitates with all the other aspects of geriatric cardiology. We're, uh, I think, a very welcoming group. We see the um, field as burgeoning and a need to really um, educate the next generation. Um, because to be honest, you are for sure the uh, very promising future. Wonderful. Um, what are you most excited about at this year's ACC? Um, I think, you know, I'm most excited always to see colleagues and friends and kind of interact with folks. Um, the level of camaraderie is really um, amazing and high. Um, you know, scientifically, I'm very excited as the chair of geriatric cardiology to see so many sessions kind of uh, focusing and importantly, those sessions kind of interdigitating with our colleagues in other arenas. So, you know, we have sessions involving electrophysiological issues, interventional cardiology, um, working with the CV care team. So uh, the fact that um, I think geriatric cardiology, one of its unique aspects, does require you know, a, a broadened team to really engage. And so um, we, we tend to be quite collaborative in that regard. All right, awesome. Any non-cardiology activity you're going to do while you're in Washington, DC? Um, yeah, um, a few of us always get together for our annual um, uh, very expensive foodie dinner. And this year, I'm excited to hear my wife is coming down. She is actually a patient care coordinator for the Pediatric Cardiomyopathy Foundation. So we're going to have a nice dinner on Saturday night. Um, right before our final um, big session on PC, palliative care for the 99%, which I wanted to highlight, is occurring at ACC on uh, Sunday morning from um, 
10.45 to 3, an intensive half-day session on palliative care needs for the um, a spectrum of individuals uh, with cardiovascular disease, not just uh, um, those with advanced uh, you know, care planning needs, but really trying to bring palliative care more into the forefront, um, but mainly just enjoying fun with colleagues. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you so much. My pleasure.